we're in the middle of a presidential campaign whose historical uh, importance cannot be overestimated. It is a perhaps a turning point historically, um, not only for America but for the whole world. The level and the types of things that we're facing now are gathering in, like storm clouds. The Russians and the Chinese we're having military problems with. The economy, the financial markets are shaky. Um, there's a heroin epidemic spreading across America. Um, uh, the list goes on and on and on. The, uh, there is a potential, at least an attempt at a right-wing dictatorship emerging in the Republican Party. Politically, it's, a, it's, it, it's horrifying. These are just some of the things. Then you look at what's happening environmentally, that the, the biosphere itself is sick and something has to be done about it pretty soon. And where are we? We have a debate going on whether there should be a major change going on or whether there should be a gradual change. Well, all of the uh, signs seem to be poor, uh, pointing to gradualism as maybe being a form of suicide. At any rate, we have Susan Brown Miller here. I am honored to have her here. She's perhaps one of the most outstanding women of the last hundred years when it comes to the women's movement. And I don't say that lightly. She wrote a book called um, uh, Against Our Will. In, against Our Will, yeah. In women and Rape. Yes. Which has influenced the legal system in America, has changed the law, has protected millions of women against sexual harassment. In fact, the, the concept of sexual harassment began with this lady. And I'm honored to be here with her. Uh, great book. That book has been referred to as one of the best, most important 100 books in recent times. By the New York Public Library. By the New York Public yeah. Library. Yes. yes. And I agree. Yeah. And you know, I just got a translation in the works. I'm going to get a contract from South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> from South Korea. South Korea, yeah. I mean, I got Japan and uh, uh, China years ago, years ago, but all of a sudden, out of the blue, comes They're South doing Korea. It. Well, it was, boy, if, nice, you're nice. if you're influencing them, boy, you're penetrating I mean, into well, they traditional have, culture. They, uh, yes, but uh, they have a history of women's activism uh, at the major university in Seoul. And uh, they also have a woman president now. Ah, yes. yes, that's she right. She is the daughter of a dictator. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> but, we'll overlook that. <laughs> but she, no, she's uh, plowing her, her own path. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me say that uh, uh, Ms. Brown Miller is a ardent supporter of Bernie Sanders in this campaign. Right. She has been out on the streets collecting signatures along with the rest of us. You know, that's how committed she is to this I, thing. I try to stay in warmer lobbies. <laughs> well, yes. You're out there. <laughs> I was. We had it we turned in our petitions okay. for the New York State. So this is an ardent supporter of Bernie Sanders. Why? Well, you know, uh, he just, uh, when he began speaking, when I began hearing him, I felt he was speaking to me. And that's how I felt about uh, Barack Obama in 2008. I don't consider myself simply a Democrat, you know, I feel my politics are much further left than that. Uh, but you know, the Democratic primaries are where it's been at in New York. And I've always uh, voted in every primary, every general election. I take voting seriously, you know. Yeah, so uh, before Iowa, I uh, committed to Obama, before Iowa. Uh, and, uh, and I started to give little bits of money. You know, when you do that, they think you are like somebody who's going to be contributing all the time, and it just drove me crazy. And that's now driving me crazy with Bernie's <laughs> campaign, too. 
They uh, keep asking well, for every money. Every day they want yeah. more money. Get, send three bucks. Yeah, all right. Uh, but you know they don't need you to contribute much, but they'd like it to keep coming. Uh, the, uh, after the great New Hampshire win. I knew my role, and I got offline uh, to make a small contribution. And they were so overwhelmed, their servers were down. And I kept getting pending, pending. <laughs> yeah, so I tried again. Well, that meant that I gave two contributions, it turned out. They fixed their servers, and uh, yes, I made two contributions. That I, I got to stop this. Yeah. Okay, so. I've been watching Bernie Sanders for many, many years. I've, I kept an eye on him for at least 15 years. He's the most unusual political figure in American politics. He is a socialist from Vermont in the U.S. Senate for 10 years, a congressman from Vermont, and he never deviated on identifying himself in that manner in a country where the word socialism is equivalent to a four-letter word. Uh, yes, and uh, it, it may hurt him, and uh, his use of revolution may hurt him. Uh, we don't know. You know, it's just the beginning yeah. for the nation. It's just the beginning. And I don't think our country's ever been more deeply divided. We're going to get into that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go directly to the women's movement and women issues are very prominent in this election, more than I've ever seen before. And it's getting hot and heavy. Madeline, Madeline Albright, that if you don't vote for Hillary, there's a special place in hell for you. Now, you are Susan Brown Miller, and what you say here has real meaning. I don't think Madeleine Albright can call you a sexist. Madeleine uh, Albright uh, apologized for her intemperate remarks. You know, we don't need to say uh, anything more. I don't recall her ever really speaking out on women's issues. Uh, but uh, I feel that the uh, Clinton campaign is nervous and uh, some uh, energetic supporters are making uh, some mistakes in what they've said. Mm. Oh, they sure did. <laughs> okay, so let's go now to uh, Maureen Dowd. Have you seen her column yes, in the New I York know. Times? <laughs> yes. What she yeah, says in, funny. What they she arts for the audience, let's uh, clarify what was in that column. She accuses Hillary Clinton of the person that tried to kill or did kill the uh, women's movement. That was, and she gives the reasons for it. And a lot of it was involved in her protection of Bill Clinton's philandering and abuse of women. And that she used women and she had them hide behind their skirts. Well, uh, I uh, enjoy um, Marine Dad's uh columns because uh, they are uh, certainly lively and I remember her in uh, during the uh, Clinton Obama battle and I remember her calling Obama a fawn she called him Bambi <laughs> he uses colorful language uh, more so than most other columnists in the New York Times oh, she's great yeah and some people uh, um, like, Clinton side have wondered what happened a long time ago that made her so anti-Clinton. Uh, but she has her principles. Yeah. Um, what about the argument that uh, women have a duty to support a woman who's running for president yes. and that it would advance the uh, uh, the, the, the position of welfare <laughs> I got of women. Question. <laughs> okay, you let me hear you on that. Well, one. you know, I like to quote Adele Davis. That that's a surprise to you, isn't it? Adele, Adele Davis. Davis. Yeah, she was one of the first uh, who uh, wrote a book on um, uh, organic foods are better and I things remember. like that. Yes. Yeah. 
uh, and she had a cute line. She was very high on apricots. I mean, she felt apricots and apricot nuts were a very significant. Oh in yes, diets. I remember and, that. And uh, she said, "But the question is, which apricot from <laughs> where? Which apricot from where?" So that's what I think about uh, women in politics. Which apricot are you, and from where? Where are you coming from? Uh, so of course uh, I couldn't possibly say that just because a woman is running, I would support her, and and I certainly couldn't do that. If there's a more progressive candidate out there who is astonishing people by raising issues like socialism, uh, how the European countries handle health insurance, uh, calling for uh, free uh, college tuition when, you know, it wasn't long ago that we did have free college. CCNY. Yep. Yep. I remember there was an old song. Don't worry, CCNY is free. Uh, uh, there was an old song back in the 60s. Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that's it. You know, uh, I, I, I had no trouble going for Obama in 2008, and I had no trouble going for uh, uh, Bernie Sanders in 2016. Yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if I may call you Susan, yeah. you've settled the issue on whether a, a woman has to vote for a woman or not. Well, Come, yeah, I mean, coming we from could you, it, but it it's definitive. Silly. You know, I mean, you're not going to, uh, we, we would hardly be for yeah. Sarah Palin. I mean, there's just no point in talking okay, about that. Okay, well, that's, you've made the definitive yeah. statement It's coming from a definitive person. Um, all right. Something that's come up in the uh, campaign is uh, Bernie Sanders, after Planned Parenthood, the, the leader of Planned Parenthood, came out and uh, endorsed Hillary, mm. and they are now running ads in the, in uh, Nevada, very strong yeah. and you know pro uh, Clinton ads, uh, uh, as if. Uh, uh, you know, if you're going to care for women and all that, you got to vote for Hillary. I mean, uh, uh, so Bernie Sanders made a, camp, a comment that uh, they were, uh, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm said. for Planned Parenthood, but they're part of the establishment. Yes. He got jumped on all over the place. Well, it was an, uh, not a graceful phrase of his, and I don't think he quite meant it that way. Uh, you know, I, I'd hate to be out there being judged by every half sentence of mine. Um, but uh, we all know that Planned Parenthood does so much more than abortions. And uh, it would have been good if he had said that. I noticed that Donald Trump, in a recent uh, question about Planned Parenthood, he said, and they do uh, 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 other good things, but he, he didn't say it either. Come on, they do breast exams, they do general health for women in, in places that there, where there are no clinics. They're fantastic. Cecile Richards, the president, is certainly a politician. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. I've seen her uh, work a room. Um, for me, you know, uh, the issue is abortion, and uh, I had the uh, uh, experience uh, before Roe v. Wade of having three illegal abortions in the 1960s. I, uh, you went to Pennsylvania? Dr. Spencer <laughs> Dr. wasn't Spencer. practicing when I needed him. Oh, you need. Where are you now, Dr. I Spencer? Interviewed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May his name always live. Dr. Spencer. A great, uh, a Ashland, hero. Listen, I remember the phone number, Ashland 404. <laughs> but when I called, he. Dr. Spencer, for the audience, <laughs> did abortions illegally in Pennsylvania out of his kindness. Out of his care for women. Well, he it was a mining community, and his first involvement with the miners was black lung. 
And then he discovered, or the women came to him and said, Doctor, I have this other problem. I can't have another child. Uh, I interviewed him for the Village Voice. Yeah, I did. You interviewed yes. Dr. Spencer? Yes. What Years kind of later, guy? Uh, he was delightful. I'm sure I mean, he I'll, was. <laughs> I'll tell you something. He said something I've, uh, he showed me something I, I'll never forget. He's had two uh, f little fetuses in uh, a lucite or glass, and he held them up for me, and he said, which one's which? I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, this is uh, uh, a human fetus, and this is a pink fetus. Do you see any difference? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, time in fetal development in uh, the pig's uterus and the female's uterus they looked exactly uh, the same. I mean, wow. I, you know, I'd love to be able to have those. Uh, yeah, he was uh, quite an original and, and a wonderful person. Susan, but I, yeah. I had to go. I went to Cuba for my first abortion. And I went to uh, San Juan for my second abortion. And I was lucky enough to go back to the same wonderful doctor, Manuela Otero Roque, in San Juan for my third abortion. The techniques had improved by then as well. They really had. So nobody is more committed than uh, the rights of women to all aspects of our reproductive freedom than I am. And for me, you are not a feminist unless you believe yeah. Susan, I have a great interest in anthropology and in our hunter-gatherer ancestors. Mm -hmm. Abortion was practiced for, mil for tens of thousands of years by the hunter-gatherers. It was a biological necessity for the survival of the species. Had they not performed it, we wouldn't be here today. Here's why. A woman had a child. She can carry the child because they were wanderers, gatherers. They didn't stay in one spot. In order to survive and have enough food, you have to go to another spot. She can carry one baby. She couldn't carry two. <laughs> they, well, <laughs> they engaged in abortion and saved the human race. Well, I uh, always have wondered, and I've never been able to figure out what techniques they use. Uh, I hope uh, they are uh, safer today. I mean, people talk about certain plants as abortifacients. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I do know that uh, now we have extremely safe methods uh, th throughout the, tri uh, the three trimesters. And if you take away the rights to the, the difficult semester, uh, the third semester, uh, then it, you take it out again, uh, you know, you go back and you take it away from the second semester and, you know, there, and then you're on the way to ban abortion in the United States of America as uh, a lot of uh, right-wing religious conservative people want. There's no doubt. It's very clear in their uh, debates when they're on TV and well, in their speeches. Well, there's 100,000 years of human experience with abortion, and it helps save the human species, period. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, try uh, t telling them that in uh, Ecuador, no right, abortions. Well, we're putting it on the Other, air. Yes, get many, to, get many Central and South America countries, no abortion, illegal abortions. Right. But not uh, legal abortions. All right. That, yeah. Yeah, well, that. It's between Hillary and Bernie. What's oh, I'm going to get to Thank that. Thank you. I'm going to yes. get. I'm going to get to that. Right. All right. <laughs> he uh, went off on this tangent of a hundred. No, right. Well, I'm, I'm, well, we have a lot of time. We have a yeah, lot of time. Okay. It's all right. We're going to get. I'm going to get to it, Joe. Believe me. We have a lot of time. Yes. So I I do believe that uh, Bernie's position on women's reproductive uh, freedom is as strong as Hillary's. I, I wouldn't try to nitpick and uh, say, yeah, uh, 
So uh, then if you have two uh, candidates with the same position, it, you know, that's sort of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, Sanders, all right, the Sanders economic uh, vision, uh, you know, um, uh, how, how would it affect women, um, uh, minimum wage, uh, universal health care, controlling Wall Street? Uh, he talks all the time about uh, <clears throat> those at the bottom of the economic ladder and uh, makes it clear uh, uh, that they are black workers, female workers. He makes that very clear. Um, Corporations have such extraordinary ways to uh, deny women equal pay. Uh, the Lily Ledbetter Act that President Obama signed, I mean, that was quite uh, amazing because people assumed and everybody was saying, President Kennedy signed a law and women had equal pay. <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. Those corporations uh, knew about tort law and they knew how, how to put clauses in so that if you found out you uh, weren't getting paid as much as the men who did the same job, and Lily Ledbetter, who was white from Gadsden, right. you know, Alabama, great lady, Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Yep. Uh, she didn't find out until she retired when uh, somebody put a note on her desk and said, uh, "Lily, you know, you've been getting a lot paid less than men here for the same job." She was a supervisor on a, on a tire assembly line. I just love the idea of a woman being a supervisor on a, on a tire assembly line. This is a real goddamn it. Uh, and uh, she didn't know. She knew there were some years she didn't get a, uh, a, any more money, and she said, oh, well, bad year for them now. I mean, she, she had lots of reasons. You know, she didn't want to believe it was just because she was a woman, because after all, they let her be a supervisor on a, an assembly <laughs> line. And then when she found out, there was just no stopping her. That was the old thing. Uh, Don't give them a raise, give them a title. <laughs> That's and there's also this policy in, I remember I once worked for an office, in an office a long time ago. There's this policy in business, one of the first things they're told when you're hired, don't tell the other people what you're getting. <laughs> you know, with leaving you with the impression that you're earning a little more than the other people. And uh, you may find out that you're earning a little less. So, uh, yes, it was a wonderful fight. Uh, that uh, she made, and uh, Lily Ledbetter, and uh, took so long, and as you know, it was uh, the first piece of legislation that uh, Obama uh, pa uh, signed into law, it was the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. Right. Yeah. Do, do you think yeah. uh, Bernie, maybe Hillary, can advance that more? Well, we have to because women are still at the bottom. What of the sort of ladder. what sort of le legislative possibilities are there? You're asking me. He's well, the guy. <laughs> he's, he's the, the guy, guy with the ideas. Uh, what more? Uh, more. Well, uh, I've got to do something about. Uh, uh, the unions aren't going to be happy with that. With uh, uh, last hired, first fired. I mean, that might help. Uh, certainly, what the women's movement called for at the beginning uh, was uh, daycare centers in, in uh, you know companies that were large enough right. uh, to have one. So Maybe that, even some federally federally uh, financed daycare centers. Well, if they could be, he's going to save us all the money by <laughs> taxing right. the rich a little more. Yeah, right. Um, there are, there are um, many ways. Uh, the main problem for women and work is that uh, too often they settle for 
part-time work because they need, you know, they're the only ones uh, supporting their kids. And all the single mothers today. Astonishing how many single mothers. And so many in the South. In the South. Uh, yeah. Well, that's... I mean, you know, it's our biology. Right. Well, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Talking about Sanders' economic policy, minimum wage, I think that would affect women more than anybody else. Yes, this is true. So, uh, right. so uh, and, and Hillary's hedging on that. Is she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's, not, she's not making that pledge. So who's helping women here? Women presidents going to forward uh, women's uh, position in the world, but she's against minimum wage. I believe women would have benefited from that, that more than anybody. I think you're right. Single women with children more than anybody. Mm -hmm. And black women, she's so much for the black people. Black women would benefit more than anybody else in the country. Yes, but you see, there has, we know there has been such a fight to dignify the work that women do. I'm thinking specifically of home care workers who historically now, you know, uh, are immigrants from uh, the Caribbean, they're immigrants from Russia, whatever they are, they're coming and an easy opening into a job is to be a home care worker. But the law never included them under uh, equal pay for equal work because it, it said that they were basically people, I mean, they did feel that basically people who sit around and watch TV, you know, and they're minding somebody who's in the other room also watching TV, you know, that was how it was framed. And uh, another great woman, like Lily Ledbetter, named Evelyn Cox, who was a uh, home care worker, uh, see, it's always women who are fighting for women. You just don't know their names as much as you know the ones who are, oh, I'm going to crack the glass ceiling. Glass ceiling isn't where it's at. It's down <laughs> at the bottom where it's at. Bravo. So Evelyn Cox uh, started pushing the issue of uh, home care workers have to have a minimum wage like everybody else. And it has to be equal to the other minimum wage. And, you know, again, because this, this ties in so much with Ber what Bernie Sanders talks about, is that uh, what effect will this have on uh, insurance? And who's going to pay for uh, the uh, rightful wages of home care workers, you know, that's going to add quite a lot to health care costs. So... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, what about uh, straightening it out with Wall Street a little bit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> in, in relationship to women. Uh, How can that, uh, I've well, been thinking about I, that. Uh, you know, we hear about the few women on Wall Street. Uh, I, I read the Wall Street Journal every day. Great feature stories and great news that you don't get in the Times. And uh, that's where I read that women have a tough time staying on Wall Street. Uh, they are uh, often not in the position to work 14 hours a day which the men require in this competitive world, right? Yep. Uh, they don't feel comfortable when the after hours activity for clients who've come in from other places is to go to a strip joint. <laughs> you know, women, you know, uh, women are um, quitting jobs on Wall Street as often as they uh, are getting them when they realize that they're, they're against these so-called cultural barriers that uh, are, are really uh, demeaning, really demeaning. Like, hey, now we all go to the strip club. <laughs> so uh, 
That's one aspect of what's wrong with Wall Street, <laughs> besides the speculation. Okay. And I think Bernie's idea to have um, uh, a tax on all the speculative trades is a great idea. It's so great. Yeah. I say this as somebody who's lost a lot of money in this recent convulsive downturning market. You know. Uh, the only money really that I ever made in my life was, I mean, real money. <laughs> I didn't spend it a year. It was uh, for against our will. And uh, I've always had a, uh, a retirement fund and a regular portfolio. And uh, it's an interesting story how I got the broker that I have today. I want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, he was working in, I think it was Houston, wherever uh, Enron was. Remember Enron? And good old Enron, yes, right. Yeah. And uh, he had a lot of Enron uh, uh, clients. Enron, Enron, for, Enron, for the yeah. sake of the audience, was a company that was a total scam. People lost millions and millions of dollars on it. They, they ripped off everybody in the electrical industry, uh, power industry. Yes. And destroyed mil yes. millions of dollars in people's lives, and that's an Enron. Yeah, and needless to say, the Enron executives always pushed their employees to buy Enron stock. <laughs> <laughs> Even when the stock was thought, no, it's the best investment you'll ever make in your life. And um, It was amazing. My guy is... Uh, Put it into Enron. Well, he uh, was a broker and he handled a lot of the employees who had Enron stock. And one night, very late, he was going over the figures. And he said, this is crazy. And he sent out an email blast wow. to all, all his uh, customers saying, you have to dump, you just have to dump it right now. Uh, so he was working for brokerage. Well, when uh, and Ken Lay was his name, the head of Enron, when Ken Lay found out that one of the brokers of his stocks, you know, told everybody in a mass email, get out, uh, he had my guy fired. And the story made the New York Times, and I read about it, you know, it was about a story, it had a nice headline, uh, something like, um, uh, the stockbroker who stood up to Enron and got fired. And got, you know. Anyway, he got hired elsewhere, and uh, I, got called, I got in touch with him. And all I knew was that he was an honest person. That's all I knew about him, because uh, um, I'm not very uh, good with uh, uh, financial math. You know, arithmetic is where I fall down. <laughs> starts with arithmetic. <laughs> <I'm> verbal, <laughs> not a maths person. But I knew I needed uh, t to get out of where I was, and uh, there he was, and I said, uh, would you like a New York client? <laughs> and uh, yes, although I'm still losing money <laughs> in this recent cycle. Yeah, he's pretty nervous, too, for all of us. Yeah. So, Wall Street. What else about Wall Street? Well, so, so Bernie's tax on, on speculation. Tax on it's, speculation it's beautiful. is a beautiful idea. Beautiful. Yeah. Not that you're going to make these guys poor for it, just make them pay a little. Yeah, and maybe they'll even stop speculating with other people's money, which is, of course, what they do. It's always other people's money. Well, I think part of the uh, underlying anger in the country both on the right and on the left, is uh, we haven't gotten over that crash of 2008. No, we haven't. It is still infecting uh, the nervous system of America. Yeah, but it is. People have not been punished. People have not had pay. You know, that's been pointed out often. They haven't gone to jail for it. And uh, the changes that have been made are really not that adequate. But isn't it sad that so many people who identify today as Republicans and who love Donald Trump and all the other crazies <laughs> that uh, 
They don't see their own class interests. Uh, they don't see that the enemy is Wall Street. They don't see how it affects yeah. their lives. You know, all they see, and I'm talking about the white ones, all they see is that uh, black people, you know, have protections that we don't have. That just seems to be uh, where they're at. And um, I'm sure they were all great. Uh, Scalia supporters <coughs> who liked his uh, arguments against affirmative action. But they're also, uh, even the women, because women often turn on themselves, they're, uh, they're convinced that it's moral and noble uh, to protect a fetus when who's protecting all the children who are born, who live in poverty in America, you know? I mean, that's uh, far more serious in America and around the world. So uh, also in terms of self-interest, even people with money should be worried about Wall Street excesses, like that movie uh, Short. 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 That's yeah. telling you how many people with millions got blasted by what went on there. Their own self-interest would say, hey, let's shape this situation up here. Yes. Now why can they go gung-ho after people who will not let us regulate this thing so it doesn't happen again? They're, they're not working their own self-interest. There's something stupid going on there, on their part. They should be for this in order to protect themselves. I agree with you, but you have to be careful when you use the word stupid. <laughs> they're just blind. <laughs> blind. Uh, blind well, better. <laughs> well, they just don't see it right. You know, they just don't see it. Uh, um, they, we can see that they are angry, but they haven't figured out really who has caused them to be so nervous about their job security, about paying the mortgage, all those things, you know? I, they just, uh, it's easier for them to just you know, hate somebody just more on their own level, but maybe of a different race or different gender well, than it is to, uh, to look up and say, oh, this is who's controlling our lives, huh? That's the bottom line of American racism. It's yeah. always been there. Yeah. So it's just, I've never seen it legitimized, like by what Donald Trump is doing. Even the Republicans and the most conservatives have kept that. They would take their votes and sort of keep them under control. That was the Republican establishment. Mm -hmm. This time, these people are breaking out and they got a champion. Yes. And they've always been there, Susan. I've known them since I was a kid. You know, burn the niggers, kill, kill the, the black people are destroying our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, but there they was were a time. capable of that for years, that but they've been kept in check. But, well, there was a time when they all voted Democrat. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They voted yeah, economic they were, issues. They were still angry. At the Depression. Right. Yep. Before that, even. I mean, they were angry at uh, oh, Lincoln freed the slaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Now, uh, what do you? How do you respond to this? Thing that they say about Bernie Sanders. Well, he's like Eugene McCarthy and George McGovern. Oh, he, okay. he's, our hopes are going to be dashed. And we've seen these phenomena before, these, these prairie fires that, that uh, flare up and burn themselves out, that he's just another one of them. Do you feel that that might be true? I have no idea if he'll have staying power if he'll be able to uh, continue at this incredible high level of uh, conviction that other people see as conviction. I mean, they believe he's honest. You know, so much has to do with personality in our, uh, you know, our American way. I would mean, probably for all uh, candidates, but uh, I was for Gene McCarthy and I, actually interviewed him for the Times. 
uh, afterward. Uh, he had a problem of uh, appearing and being arrogant. McCarthy. <laughs> he had that problem, yes. Um, there are uh, people now who feel that uh, Hillary Clinton is, is arrogant because she's so positive. That her way, she knows everything. You know? <laughs> I remember one of her remarks against Obama saying, I did this and I did that. <laughs> and Barack Obama gave a speech. <laughs> you know, which is true, he did give a speech. <laughs> at the uh, uh, Iraq War. Uh, and as she's being made, she has to keep apologizing for her vote for that Iraq War for the rest of her life. That woman will have to keep apologizing uh, for that vote. What a di the disaster is so great that no apology is going to wipe that away. No apology could wipe it away. It was so wounding what, what was done there. Uh, yes. We're limping from it. Yes, this is true. And uh, we shouldn't be in Afghanistan either. Yeah. We should not be, as Bernie says, I thought I made up the phrase, <laughs> we shouldn't be the world's policemen. <laughs> How does it happen that we get to be the world's policemen? You know? And why? do these Republicans, and maybe Hillary Clinton, why do they feel that that's, that's the way we save America and its reputation in the world, by, by sending other people to uh, battlegrounds? You know, I, I, uh, I've never understood that. I've never understood how that connection was forged. But it was forged because governments have to get their young men mostly, and now young women, to go to these wars, you know? They have to instill this patriotism in them that they should die for the, their, their country. Nobody should have to die for their country, yeah. Especially since the ones who are mapping it all out for them aren't the ones who ever die. About being policemen of the world. Yeah. That doesn't mean policemen of the world. Does that mean over a uh, regime change? Does that mean throwing out Allende? Allende, Allende in Chile and yeah. putting in Pinochet, which oh, is, yeah. Henry Kissinger did. <laughs> Does that mean going to Argentina and killing off a democratically elected president, a very good one, and putting in the junta, yeah. which the CIA did yes. in Argentina? Is that policing yes, the world? Well, uh, I can think of Now, when uh, America was uh, involved in policing the world and we can do it with some pride is when we fought the Nazis. Okay, you were a good policeman. Well, that good was cop, the then. last just war. That was a just that war. That was our last. That was just good cops. War. Yeah. Otherwise, we've been yeah. pretty bad cops. Yeah. Um, but we were. You would when you were discussing all those those names of the dictators. Oh, that we, Pinochet, uh, Pinochet and the, bands, the junta, and many, 54. many more. The death I mean, squads I, and yeah. yeah. Oh well, and and Kennedy's uh, try to assassinate uh, <laughs> with uh, Fidel. <laughs> Fidel Castro. He right. tried it here yeah, right. several times. Yeah, you know, Bay of Pigs. Yeah, pigs. Whoa. Yeah, policemen of the world. All right. Uh, I'm getting it all wrong, you know, thinking that uh, that Bay of Figs invasion was amazing. Thinking that the, their, their sources told them the people will rise up. <laughs> Nobody rose up. Nobody, Nobody rose, rose up, up then. Uh, oh, and then the, uh, I blame a lot on Kennedy because he's considered uh, still, uh, you know, a democratic hero for so many people. But uh, 
when Cuba, and Cuba really didn't want those missiles, had the Russian missiles there. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, American ship and the Russian ship were, crew were just heading toward each other. And it, it, the, I remember because I went to Washington, I.F. Stone was holding a, a rally because he thought this would be the uh, World War III. Was, this was just going to happen. That was a scary moment. It was scary. Oh, it was frightening. Yeah, and it was Khrushchev, who, of course, we, uh, uh, Kevin, he said, he blinked. <laughs> yeah, that's so much. He blinked. Yeah, but he saved. We uh, blinked too. We took the missiles out of Turkey. Yeah, yeah it, right. It, it but, was just a lot of PR spin always there. Always a scene in uh, uh, this macho conflict. Right. Yeah. That's what <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and that's part of Hillary Clinton's problem is that she wants to uh, look as tough. As the boys. Yeah, be one of the regime changers. Okay. Well, Bernie was great on that, you know, and he it was said wonderful. so creatively when he said, I don't Terrific. see where regime change unto itself accomplishes anything. What happens afterward? After? No, he's. You know, it looked so simple in that Arab Spring. Because uh, I'm a great Facebook person. <laughs> and I saw the naive comments that other people were saying. Oh, it's so easy, and then it can happen here and there. All they have to do is gather in the square. <laughs> <laughs> Peacefully oh, yeah. gather in the square. Gather in the square. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's an so aftermath. Was, was really right on uh, when he said, it's not regime change, it's what happens afterward. And can you do anything? We had a regime change in Iran. And look what happened. Yes. There was uh, another CIA arrangement for the oil in Iran. It was a duly elected president or premier or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And they toppled them. They made a regime change. And we're still paying for it. Well, I uh, t did not support. I'm with the Republicans. I didn't support uh, the, uh, the nuclear deal that we think we've gotten. You didn't support it? No, because I don't think we got anything. Uh, why? Why don't I think so? Because I don't trust them. You don't trust them? No. No. And also, if you listen to uh, the current uh, Ayatollah, he doesn't trust uh, America. Yeah, no, I wouldn't trust them. What about their claims to rigorous in, uh, inspections and all of that? <laughs> you you, you don't lot. trust that no, either. No, that's a lot like what uh, was happening uh, in Iraq, uh, where I think they were willing <laughs> to come and rigorously inspect us. Oh, we don't know that. Oh, no, you have the WMD. Uh, I, I, I feel that whole uh, Middle East is uh, it's a, <laughs> trouble. It's a can of worms. Yes, it is. A can of worms. There's no easy answers there. Oh, just, I hope, just, Can I ask you to talk about imperialism versus placement of the world? Imperialism? Oh, I can talk about imperialism. <laughs> I can talk about anything. Oh, I just want to make yes. one comment. We left I something have... hang hanging. I just want to make a comment and, and go what? into that. What? I left one thing hanging. What? I brought up Eugene McCarthy and uh, and uh, George McGovern. That would, oh. That Bernie might be just another dash to. No, well, oh, well, we didn't discuss McGovern. And right. McGovern was a very weak candidate. Okay, just because you want to yes. get the other, just one comment on that. I don't think the Sanders phenomenon is just an election. He started it better something. Not be. It better be a McGovern, McGovern disappeared. McCarthy disappeared. But Sanderism is not going to disappear. I, ho I hope you're right. Uh, because uh, unless there is a movement, uh, he won't be able to accomplish what he wants I to I think there's a genie or... lit out of the bottle there. I hope so. I hope so, too. Yeah. Nobody knows for sure, but I have that feeling. I've been involved in movements since I was a kid. Yeah, me too. And not, some, not quite a kid. Well, because I was a socialist since I was 17. Oh, 17, you're still a kid? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I guess you, you were I there, said, too. Okay. I, uh, 
I decided I was for Henry Wallace. <laughs> okay, right, we're on the same okay. page there. Yes, At any me. rate, I have the feeling here that in that youth movement, we'll talk about that in a minute, that youth surge, there's something there very profound. But what's well, your question there, uh, Joe? Well, the history of the world is a, a polite way of dealing with imperialism, which. Oh, well, yeah, imperialism. I've had conversations with my friends recently where my point is that, I guess it's a lot of people's point, that so much of what's wrong in the world today was the result of British imperialism. And the British have been considered uh, the best of the imperialists, you know? Everybody says, oh, the Belgians. Well, all they know about the Belgians is, all right, they cut off the hands of people. What Britain did was uh, so much more severe and around the world. It was amazing. The tender, you know, the sun never set on the British Empire. And they pitted uh, local uh, ethnic groups against each other. They chose the ones uh, that they liked and didn't give certain huge ethnicities, like, of course, everybody knows the Kurds, uh, didn't even give them a territory of their own, I mean, a legal territory. They didn't make it clear enough. It shouldn't have been there to begin with in Israel when it was Palestine, but they didn't make it clear enough and did the uh, usual British thing of whoop, leaving suddenly the way they did in India. and uh, Just leaving the mess behind. Leaving it, but suddenly. And it's so clear in India because that's what started this huge, uh, incredible warfare between uh, Muslims and Hindus. It was going to, all right, you don't want us anymore, whoop, out we are. <laughs> And then they started killing each other because of that pent-up frustration and the fact that, that Britain hadn't solved it. And uh, I'm very pro-Israel, so I feel really sorry for the Israelis today, still uh, not able to yeah, be uh, comfortable. Like Trump says he wants to make America, America great again. What he's talking about is more military for more American imperialism? Well, it's hard to know really what Trump feels. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know. oh, he, uh, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> plays it by ear. He's been having fun. It's clear now that he does consider himself a serious candidate and thinks he can win it. And he might be the candidate. Except I think in a Trump Sanders battle, Bernie would win. I think Bernie would win that one, that yes, one. because he, Trump yeah. can't win the Hispanic vote more than 40 percent, according to the what I hear politically is that he has to get a certain percentage of the minority vote mm -hmm. in order to win. There's no way he can get that vote. I don't know. I can't see further ahead, you know. I think we're all just, ah. <laughs> No, I, yeah. I, I know the Latino community very well. No, no, no way. No way that, that he is, he's a devil incarnate in that community. And I, I hear it from everybody. I always think it, uh, that his remark about, and the Mexicans will build that wall. Oh. <laughs> so Boy, has he ever been to Mexico? Yes. You're going to make yes. those people do that? Well, I, you don't know those I people. I don't know why he thinks they're going to build the wall. <laughs> What's he going to pay them? And then when his supporters found out, I'm going to make the Mexicans it? pay the wall. I, I, do you ever hear the word macho? You know, it comes from Mexico. <laughs> That cheese book. I wouldn't just restrict it to Mexico, though. I, I wouldn't advise him to make the Mexicans pay for the wall. <laughs> it's, it's just such a nutty idea, but they all uh, propose, uh, those Republicans, such nutty ideas. And, and yet, they strike a chord. They do. There's no doubt about it. Okay. All right. So let's see. What else? How much time do we have? Okay. Let me see what else. How much time? With this fierce pop Only 15 minutes left? 
We're near the end. We what? have five We've minutes left. Begun. All right, boy, I had a whole bunch <laughs> of other questions. Let, let's get into this one. Yeah. Stevens Hawkins. Yes. The physicist. Mm -hmm. The man who discovered the black hole. Mm -hmm. We all know he's maybe the premier genius living today. Made a statement about three or four weeks ago. He said that the human race probably does not have more than a hundred years oh, no. to exist. Yes, this is Hawkins. Not some lunatic in the street talking apocalypse. No, he's talking about climate change? Climate change, artificial intelligence. He pointed out five or six different things. Atomic proliferation, rising war fever. Uh, I forgot all the details of it, but he, it was more than one thing. Climate change was one of them, but it was more than one thing this is not frivolous talk. When Stephen Hawkins talks, I listen. Now it's too depressing for me. All right, very depressing, but you got to deal with it. I, <laughs> you got to deal oh with it. Ber, uh, Bernie Sanders, the youth surge, and it's a passionate. I've been out in the streets with these young people. Yes. You know? They're passionate. They are, but they're also a little disorganized, as you know. They, they're a little yeah, they're disorganized. A little disorganized. <laughs> Just they are. <laughs> yeah. But they are and definitely. And they didn't get those petitions out for well, us on the first like, day. You know, we, we have our, you know, you, us, our generation sees some of their faults. Or, however, they are passionate. And I've been wondering what underlies that passion. I, I have to feel that you and I would worry about climate change and environmental disaster, but they would worry about if they had a brain in their head, they're going to worry about it worse. I think they've been touched by Bernie Sanders and something in his honesty and conviction. And I've thought about this. Yep. Why, Bernie? How okay. come you know, you've done so well so early? And I think that uh, they see him as the grandpa they never knew. It's so nice that they like an older man. Young people are so contemptuous of their elders. And here we have young people who love this old man, a little younger than me, 